I would swim straight down for what, like <laughs> minimum 30 seconds yeah. straight down? Yeah, crazy. <laughs> I mean, like, it's pretty wild. Yeah. It's super deep over there. And like you could swim down along the rock and then they would like open up into like another chamber and it would just get super scary at that point and then I'd swim back up. <laughs> to Tulum. Woke up really early. Early. <laughs> yeah. Probably woke up. 640. Yeah. Which is not that early, but I mean, we had to wake up like 40 minutes ago to look this good. It takes a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because we both haven't done any communal living since probably our crew days at least, uh, working on boats. So I kind of forgot the etiquette of getting all your stuff ready the day beforehand. So I just got all of our stuff, shoved it in my book bag, and then came out into the common area. Luckily, in there was the dark. A, in the dark. Yeah, I don't, don't have, I didn't have my contacts in, so <laughs> that's <was> fun. <laughs> but yeah, we're heading over to Tulum now. Yeah, well, we woke up so early so we can get to Tulum right when it opened at eight o'clock. Because as I understand it, once the tour buses come in at about nine or ten, it starts to get a little crowded. So figure if we're gonna check it out, we might as well get to check it out, you know, in relative relative isolation. Here we go. All right, what do you want, buddy? You got a huge selection. Well, it's not gonna happen here. We got a lot of bread. Yeah. <laughs> but it looks delicious. Where are we, bud? We're gonna collect Tebo. Okay, well, we are walking down a road. We just got dropped off in our Colectivo um, on a random street. I think because it's so early, nothing's open, but don't really know if we're in the right spot. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, I, there, we got out, and by the time we, like, stopped and started looking around, we were like... <laughs> Where is it? There's nothing around here looks like it's... Tulum, I don't see a ruin anywhere. We uh, just checked with a dude sweeping the leaves off the street, and yes, we are in the right place. The ruins are right down this street right here. But you can kind of see, like, why it might not necessarily look like this is where, you know, the entrance to some ancient Mayan ruins would be located. It's, yeah, so I guess we're here early enough where pretty much nothing's open. The ruins don't open till 8 o'clock and it's 7.24 right now. So we got another 36 minutes till they'll even open, which is what we wanted because I wanted to be there like the moment it opened just to try and get it as much to ourselves as possible. is also known as Zama because of being in one of the places where dawn first breaks in our country. How cool is that? Super cool. Tulum. Wow, so it's very, very hot here in the jungles of Tulum and it's only 7.30 in the morning. So I'm ready to get some sea breeze going on. <laughs> you got some things here. You got some things here. Yeah. You got more things here, but not as many. And there we are here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and we're gonna go in there. Be careful, loose wiring. Okay. <laughs> The city of Tulum was originally built to be a seaport so that inland cities such as Coba and other towns in the area were able to trade with the rest of Central America. And from a sailor's perspective, that's probably my favorite aspect of the city. Going in. Oh, yeah. What do you think, bud? It's neat because it's right by the ocean, so it's this beautiful setting, but it feels a lot like a, like a, tourist attraction like a like a amusement park because of all the paths you can't go outside the path 
You know what I mean? Compared to? Compared to Ushma, where you could walk anywhere, do anything, you know? Yeah, that's cool. So. As we walked around the city, I tried to imagine the generations of seafarers who set off for distant locations such as modern-day Guatemala in their small sailing canoes looking to trade jade for obsidian, and the differences and also the similarities in their sailing adventures and, and our own. Okay, so um, right here is actually a pretty good vantage point of most of the the ruins. So right here behind me, that's the main uh, palace. It's right there on the on the coast, right on the ocean. And uh, most of the ruins are between us and it. So most of the other ruins are kind of in this field in between us. We got here, you know, at uh, I think it was 7:30, and right around like 8:15, it started getting pretty busy. And you can see there's a lot of a lot more people around. But we had the place to ourselves for. Uh, at least a half hour or so, so that was pretty nice. So did you have fun, bud? Yeah, that was really cool. What was your favorite part? Um, well, I liked when we came in, we could kind of hear the sea beckoning, so I just had this, like, really strong desire to go to the cliff, so that was really cool once you actually get to the cliffs, and then you see the ocean, and then you see these ruins, so that was really cool. Yeah. Sweet. What about you? What was your favorite? Yeah, I, I would have to agree. Like just the fact that it's on the coast, you know, you you see these ancient ruins, which like you would feel like we're in the jungle, and then all of a sudden, there you are. Anyway, so that's pretty neat. But all the people and all the like, I don't know. Like, look, you know, there's one trail, and you can't go off of it, and people will yell at you if you do. <laughs> I don't know that for a fact. It's not like I experienced it today. <laughs> it's not like you're bad to the bone. Um, I am a Chico Malo. This is the entrance to Tulum where we were about uh, two hours ago. And uh, there's a ton of people. So very happy that we came as early as we did. Breakfast, buddy? Well, I kind of just ate a lot, but I'm gonna try to be a trooper and eat a lot more. That's what happens when you find out that you get breakfast with your stay yeah. after like, you've eaten I just, breakfast. How is it? Hot. Very tasty. We decided to get off the beaten path and explore Copa, a small town in the middle of the jungle with a couple more Mayan ruins and cenotes scattered throughout the jungle. All right, well, we found our colectivo, um, and it's actually just this random street, really pretty mural back there, I don't know if you can see it, um, but it's just this street next to um, a bakery, and apparently every day um, between two and four leave to Coba. So right now we're just waiting for two more people to come and fill the van. Um, right now it's Jordan and I, and then a woman with her two kids women and three kids. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're just reading uh, The Lonely Planet. There's Jordan back there, kind of reading about what we're going to do once we get to Coba. But I'm excited to hop into a cenote and cool down a little bit. <laughs> Going on a road trip. <laughs> just us and the boys. <laughs> but I passed out in the van. So I just woke up to this really cool little marsh area 
Uh, actually reminds me a lot of South Carolina, so it's really pretty, a lot more quiet out here. So, I don't know, I know Jordan enjoyed Tulum, but I'm always, uh, I always like the quieter, more remote places, so I feel like I'm going to like Koba a little bit more. This is more my speed. Yeah, yeah and over there, those are the ruins, and you can see the tops of one of the pyramids right there. And then right over here, this is town. So it's a small place all along a couple lakes. Yeah, and our plan is to uh, check out some of the cenotes today and then maybe rent a bike so that tomorrow we can watch the sunrise at Koba before all the cl crowds come. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, Sock Bay, buddy. Here we go. Hola. Hola. Um, ¿Hay espacio? Sí, hay espacio para quedarme aquí esta ¿Sí? noche. Um. <laughs> <laughs> nice reception desk. Our room is going to cost us 500 pesos a night because apparently. Both of the hotels on this island used to be hostels, but they've converted them to full service hotels. So. Right, well, we uh, found the hostel, which is actually a hotel, which is actually more expensive than it used to be. So Lonely Planet, Lonely Planet hasn't sent anyone to this part of the Yucatan in a while, it seems, because they they've been pretty wrong about a couple things. But um, anyway, so... Uh, we're in this hotel room, cost 500 pesos a night, so 25 bucks, which really isn't that bad. We rented some bikes and we're on our way to uh, check out some cenotes. Try it, it's getting less weird. So we made it to the first cenote. It's right over here behind me. And uh, Desiree's just getting changed over here. They got a little bathroom facility thing. And uh, just about ready to head down. But man, am I looking forward to it because it is hot. Hot. Very hot. And it's going to be very cold in there. And I cannot wait. We need to get in it. I want the cold water all right here. All around there. Hey bud, if you don't want to go in the cenote and you just want to stay in there the whole time, that's fine. And here. Okay. Well take pictures for me, okay? Boy, don't slip. Yeah, no. We're going down there. Way down there. <laughs> I think we're jumping here. No shit. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Shit. That's pretty wild. <laughs> it's really far down. cenotes that we found, there's a slack line that they put across the cenote so you can just kind of sit and hang out. There's not much oxygen down here so we're both kind of panting a lot. Okay so I think we're alone in here now but like we're both out of breath and we're not doing anything. It's because there's 
not a lot of oxygen in here. I forgot to bring my canary with me. So I, brought, I think that canary would be dead right now. <laughs> there is exceedingly small oxygen in here. But I guess it's Mexico, man. Tattoo tourism works. <laughs> No, like no mention of it. <laughs> By the, By the way, way, not a lot of oxygen in that cave. <laughs> yeah, free diving is almost not an option. But um, I don't think it's inherently that way. I think it's just well, there's a bird that's a alive. lot of people in here, like for, you know, a lot of the day. So like, I bet you overnight the oxygen circulates pretty well, but then like throughout the day it gets used up by people. Breathing is like my full-time occupation right now. <laughs> Jordan's getting ready to hop in. So, as you walk down this massive thing, this massive stairway, a little bit of rotten wood, no biggie, no big deal, that's strong. It's not like you would fall a far, oh, actually, I don't think you would fall very far, never mind. Whoa, holy smokes, dang, that's big. Yeah, don't hurt. No. Yeah, I thought it was the surface. It was not. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. So we're just hanging out in uh, the cenote Multunha, and gosh, I think it might be my no, it's it's my second favorite cenote that we've been to so far. But this is cool because it's just <laughs> like you're swimming along the bottom, and then it opens into this black abyss, and. Uh, it's really, really cool. What do you think of it, Beth? I think it's really fun. <laughs> yeah. Like it. And it's like, like literally you just see something black and you <clears> swim <throat> down like 50 feet and you're like, oh man, that's another like chamber, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's so clear that a couple of times I, my perception was off. So I thought I was at the surface and I still had like 15 feet to go. And it turned out what I thought was a service was actually more rocks on top of me. <laughs> so that was just crazy. And it's fun because when we got here, there's probably like 20 people. Um, but now it's just us two and another couple with this whole huge cenote all to ourselves. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. So what just happened, bud? We lost our ventilation system. <laughs> so the big fan that they have to like ventilate the cave just turned off. <laughs> Maybe that's their way of saying like, get, gotta get go. <laughs> Pass out or get out. <laughs> <laughs> right over here, kind of where they're swimming, um, is where it gets really deep. And it's hard to say how deep it is, ironically, because it's so clear. So normally I gauge depth by how um, distorted my vision of the bottom is. But here it just, it's crystal clear all the way to the bottom, pretty much. So, I mean, I would swim straight down for what, like, <laughs> minimum 30 seconds yeah. straight down? Crazy. <laughs> I mean, like, it's pretty wild. Yeah. It's super deep over there. And, like, you could swim down along the rock, and then they would, like, open up into, like, another chamber. And it would just get super scary at that point, and then I'd swim back up. But I think we got some good footage of it. Nice. But yeah, it was really fun, and we're both exhausted from just free diving for like an hour. So it was it was awesome. Perfect, perfect uh, snorkel spot. So this is uh, the 
bumpier part of our trip. A little bit of dirt road action. So that's kind of the fun part about finding different cenotes is that they're hard to get to. If they were easy to get to, they wouldn't be nearly as fun because they'd be super crowded. And also the adventure side of it wouldn't be as exciting. So heading down a bumpy road from the cenotes. Well, we're both uh, pretty exhausted from a long day of free diving. Uh, <laughs> I think we both were so excited that we just like kept on diving and diving and diving, just running on adrenaline. So by the time we submerged into the real world, we were both just like so exhausted. So um, there are... Not to mention that we woke up at six this oh, morning right. and walked all over Tulum and then had to figure out a ride to Coba, travel to Coba. So it's been a long day. Yeah, yeah. Figuring out transportation has been... I wouldn't say difficult, just uh, challenging, challenging or, or just like strenuous. You have to put a lot of energy into it if you don't want to pay for a taxi. Anyway, we're going to dive into some food. What you got going there, bud? Slice of heaven. Yeah? This is going to hit the spot. <laughs> this is con con cochinita. Cochinita pibe. They make it underground? Uh, that's right. Mm. Luau style. Oh. Uh, the it's sauce like a is Mexican so luau in here. Good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, bud, what's the damage for dinner? Uh, $19. Not too bad. Mm -hmm. And what's our plan next? Go to the apartment and watch a TV show. Or? Or walk to the lake. And then drink wine as the sun sets. <laughs> Which do you think I we... tried to make that sound bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard. Ready to go, bud? Yep, let's do this. Lead the way. Come on. Oh, it's so pretty. Ooh, look at the yellow light. Bud. Here she goes. Wanna say goodbye? Oh, goodbye. Hey, buddy. <laughs> what do I call a photo bomb? That was a good photo bomb, yeah. bud. That was a really good photo Thank bomb. You. Like, it was a really beautiful shot. <laughs> More beautiful than this. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> did you have a fun day today, bud? I did. Yeah, it was really fun. Do you feel like you, you know, have fully come full circle on since we left Key West? Over the last couple of years working on the boat, I think we've become so focused on the boat and making that dream a reality that, uh, I mean, speaking for myself, I think I've become like a little bit less fun <laughs> and more stressed out and definitely less uh, adventurous. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I was really um, scared about having lost kind of my excited nature about travel. And that, you know, that just kind of spunky edge about being in new places and meeting new people and learning new things. And uh, I was totally wrong. We came right back as soon as we started going to new places, so. It's been really cool. Sunset. Sunset. Vlog shot. Vlog shot. I'd really respect you if you pushed me off right now. Whoa! <laughs> 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 That'd be good. That'd be These are the dirty dancing stairs. She's like, <laughs> Wow, that was really good, yeah, buddy. Yeah, uh, my dancing days are over now.